it going? And welcome to another week of CCV slash 678 online. I just want to welcome here and say, hey, if you're not following us already, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Check out our other social media platforms as well. Instagram, Facebook. And it's just for you to get, you know, more con- like, I don't know, like in this, I think in this time of quarantine has been the most like I spend on my phone or taking in information or viewing different things. So, hey, if you want some more content, be sure to check us out on all of those things. Uh, Besides that, we also do game nights on Saturday nights. If you guys want to do some games with us, you don't have to pay for anything. We do it on Twitch, twitch.tv slash cctvstudent. We're just trying to give as much content for you guys just to have a chance to connect and hang out. So with that being said, we're going to go into some time of worship with Robbie. Let's head into it. A thousand times I've failed, still your mercy remains. And should I stumble again, still I'm caught in your grace. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond. So last week we finished up uh, our series of parables where we looked at a bunch of stories that Jesus shared just to help teach a life lesson. And now we're going to go into kind of a different series, and the series is going to be called The Prime Life. Now the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because nobody really wants to live a lame life uh, for the most part, right? I think if a lot of people looked at my life, see the things that I do, like, oh, you know, video games or anime or these weird little hobbies or running, they think it's a lame, but like, I enjoy it, right? But at the end of the day, none of us want to live a lame life, right? We want middle school and our high school years to be some of the most fun we ever have. We want our summers to be epic and unforgettable. We want college to be crazy and unforgettable as well. We want our jobs to be something that we enjoy and love doing day in and day out and maybe making a difference in the world around us. We want our spouse, you know, to, to be our soulmate, to, to rock, to be someone that we can lean on for the rest of our life. We don't want mediocre. We don't want standard. We don't want normal. We want the best experience of life 
in the one life that we have, right? And it, can you blame us, right? We, we want to make the most of everything that we have. But when we take a look at maybe some of the people who we would think have it all, right? When we take a look at some of the people, whether it's in the past or now, who have been either famous or have seemed to have all the money or wealth that, you know, the world can buy, uh, it seems like there's still something missing. One person I like to use for example, and it's just one quote from them, right? I'm sure maybe they feel differently now or maybe they felt differently in different times, but it's Tom Brady. I'm not a Patriots fan. I don't even really like uh, football that much, all right? So, but we're gonna look at Tom Brady because I, I kind of see him almost, at least in this last generation, as like the face of football, the biggest sport in America. But he was looking back at, you know, some of his achievements, some of the things that he's accomplished, looking back at pretty much his whole career. And, and this is what he has to say. He says, man, is this it? I'm thinking there has got to be something more than just this. Yeah, this guy who is football, who probably has everything he could ever want, that could money could ever buy. And so the question is, is how do we get that life we're all searching for? Right? How do we get that life we're all searching for? What is the formula? And, you know, where does, where does this formula come from? And I think that the formula starts with knowing that, you know what, maybe this life we're looking for, maybe that's not the place to go. Maybe the things that we think are going to make us happy isn't the area that we should go. And I think the best example for me probably comes from my freshman year in high school. Okay, just to give you a little bit of backstory, all right? My first girlfriend, sixth grade, right? pretty impressive. Uh, we dated for about two weeks. Uh, and we didn't talk once, all right? I was too nervous. <laughs> My brother actually asked this girl out for me. But yeah, first girlfriend, sixth grade. Now, a couple years later, going into my freshman year, um, you know, I'm doing sports. Um, in high school, I have a really fun group of friends. You know, I, like, I feel like life is going well. I feel like I'm accomplishing things. I'm enjoying every day. And the one thing that I think could make my life better, the one thing that made me think, okay, you know what? I got it. I like I got things together would be a girlfriend. So my freshman year striving to have a girlfriend, I ended up having about 6 girlfriends. Not all at once, all right? I know you guys think I'm pretty cool, I'm pretty but not I didn't have 6 girlfriends all at once, okay? Um but it was like I had 6 girlfriends throughout the whole year and each time they would last about 2 weeks. And at the start of that relationship I'd say, "You know what? I got things together." And by the end of that relationship, in two weeks, I'd be right back where I was at the very beginning, looking to make my life better, looking to find happiness, looking for this to fulfill and just fill something that I couldn't even put into words at the time. The thing I thought I wanted or needed the most wasn't giving me the life that I thought it would. And this is where Jesus has something to say. This is where Jesus kind of comes in and has something for you and I uh, when we're kind of looking for that life and we're not sure where to go. In John 10, verse 10, it says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it to the fullest. What are you guys doing? <laughs> My cats are going psycho, sorry. Let me read that again. John 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullest. And so here, Jesus is telling you that not only is that life you are looking for possible, but that life you are looking for is possible through him. While the thief comes only to kill and to convince you that, you know what, success and happiness is found in money or popularity, or the things we own, or uh, power and beauty, pleasure, whatever it may be, the real answer is found in him. Because I think a lot of times when we think life is going to be good, if we get to these certain things, right? Similar to how me in high school as a freshman thought, you know what? Getting a girlfriend, that's going to lead to happiness. I have no problem with girlfriends. I love girlfriends. I mean, I love my wife, all right? But I was so wrong. 
right? Every time I thought it fixed this, it answered this, but it left me in the same place I was before. And this is what Jesus is saying here, that living in your prime daily really depends on who your life is in, right? And whose hands your life is in. Your best life is found only by placing it in the best hands. And those best hands are Jesus's. The best life is in Jesus's hands. And so that's gonna be our very first week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys like the kind of switch of pace. Uh, but I'm gonna pray for us and we're gonna head out for the day. Dear Lord, I wanna thank you for wanting to give us a prime life. And I think that can look like a lot of different things. It's not what maybe we'd think a prime life would look like. And that's because maybe we're looking in the wrong ways, in the wrong areas, in the wrong direction altogether. I just want to pray that we can focus on you, that we can place our life in your hands and that we know that, hey, when we do this, that doesn't just fix and make everything better, but it's a step in the right direction into trusting and having a relationship with you. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen.